In this video, we will be covering how to secure access to your files, as well as see how SOLIDWORKS PDM manages our file references. For the first part of this video, we will be looking at user and group permissions, specifically administrative permissions and folder permissions. In the second part of this video, we will look at the contains and where use tabs in our local view to see how SOLIDWORKS PDM can manage our file references. To access our user permissions, these are going to be found in the users node of our admin tool here. And if I go ahead and open up my name, we can see this will open up my properties where I will get access to my administrative permissions and folder permissions. Looking at my administrative permissions here, these control administrative tasks that the user can perform, while our folder permissions control the file explorer operations a user can perform on files and folders. So by selecting whether we want these folder permissions to apply to the entire vault or to a specific folder. You may notice on the right hand side, you'll see this icon here, which matches our group. This icon indicates that these permissions have been added at the group level and not the user level. So these permissions can be assigned per each user or you can create a group, which we can see right here. I have my engineering group. And if I open that up, I can see this contains three people and I can assign these administrative and folder permissions at the group level to make sure that all of my users have the same level of access. For more information on each specific folder permission option, as well as each specific administrative permission option, please check out the SOLIDWORKS PDM administration guide where they will clearly lay out each permission, what's its name and what does it do. To access the administration guide, go up to help in the top left-hand corner and we will see administration guide here. In order to manage the access to our files, we'll take a look at our group settings here. So back to this engineering group. Again, this has three members in it, so all of these permissions are going to affect those three members. By looking at our administrative tasks here, again, these are going to control administrative tasks that a user can perform. So things like refusing login, if they need to enter state change comments, can they see the admin tool, things like that. When it comes to restricting who can see what at a file level, we would want to look at folder permissions. So I can apply these folder permissions, again, which are gonna control things that people can do or see inside of the file explorer view. I can apply these to the entire vault, or again, we can choose a specific folder. So if I were to choose project seven here, if I were to apply these folder permissions and choose who can do what for project seven, that will apply to all subsequent folders as well. So if you want these folder permissions to act for your entire vault, you would choose the top level vault. And here we can see permissions such as read file contents, show working versions of files. So permissions like these will either allow or not allow users to see the files that are being managed. Permissions don't only apply to our administrative and folder permissions, but also our state and transition permissions as well. So if I were to open up my workflow here, I can see that we have states and permissions. I can choose who is allowed to use which state or transition. So something like no approval required, I probably wouldn't want my engineers using that. I would save that for maybe a manager or an administrative user. So by looking at this transition here, we can see that we also have permissions inside of our workflow. So I can see for my no approval required, my administrators, change control, and admin user all have permission to use this state. So we've seen transition permissions. We also have state permissions as well. If I were to open up one of these states, I can see each group that is applied here, and we can see all of their state permissions. These are very similar to our folder permissions here. Things like must enter version comment, read file contents. These are all permissions that are familiar to our folder permissions tab. So in here, we were able to see the state permissions as well as our transition permissions here. So we're really allowed to lock down not only what can people see or manage inside of the file explorer, but we can also manage 
who's allowed to use which part of our approval process. For the next portion of our video, we'll navigate over to our local view to talk about file references. So when looking at how SOLIDWORKS PDM manages our file references, the best way is to see it in action by using the contains and where used tabs. So if I navigate over to my designs folder here and go find some CAD data, so inside of project seven here in my design data folder, I have a top level assembly and all of the components that are referenced to the assembly are found in the components folder. By selecting this top level assembly, we can use the contains tab to see all of the files that are referencing our top level assembly. So if I were to select on one of these randomly and browse to that file, I can see that it's gonna bring me to that components folder here. And now that I've browsed to a file that is being referenced by that top level assembly, we can then see the where used tab and I can see that this subassembly here is being referenced by this top level assembly we were looking at earlier. So when using the where used tab, it's not even showing just CAD data where it's being used, but I can see it's being referenced to a couple of engineering change documents. I can see it's being referenced by a PDF of the drawing as well. And maybe I decide to change its name. Let's change this to chassis. When I do that, I rename it just like I would a regular file inside of my file explorer. But notice that even after making the change to the name, everything still shows inside of my contains tab here. As well as if I went to where used, I can still see that this chassis file is still being referenced by all of these other documents as well. So as long as the document lives inside of our vault, we can change the name and that won't be a problem. But what about moving files as well? So if I were to cut this, right, it's going to copy, then once I paste it, it'll delete, uh, delete this file in this location. Let's say I move this to my top level project seven folder. Let's see, I'll paste this here. I can see that my chassis exists here. And when I open it up again, I can see where is it being used. It's being used in all of these documents, hasn't lost any of these file references, as well as if I use that contains tab, I can still see that it contains all of these files. And if I went back to that design data components folder, you'll see that there is no chassis file in here. I have moved that, it lived right below this 227. I've moved that to a different folder and it still contains all of our referenced components as well. So we were able to see how we can manage user access through different types of permissions, as well as manage our file references by using the contains and where use tabs to see where our files are being used. If you like this video, please be sure to check out our YouTube channel.